with the handmaidens and I'm here today to talk about June 24th. June 24th is an exciting day for me because that is my wedding anniversary with Ariel. We were married on June 24th. It was a beautiful day, the only nice day that entire summer and we just celebrated our 21st anniversary and my mom gave us this shrub as a gift for our anniversary. And the reason she picked this shrub is because June 24th, in addition to being our anniversary, is Fairy Day and St. John the Baptist Day. And this shrub is called St. John's Wort. St. John's Wort is a special shrub because it's cute. Look at these cute little flowers. And it also has lots of medicinal properties. St. John's wort is classically used as an antidepressant, a natural antidepressant. You can take the flowers, you can take the whole plant, you can make a tincture out of that. You can make an oil out of that because it's used for nerve problems if you rub it on topically. Uh, the scientific name is Hypericum and I have, oh, I have some trouble with this plant in the research I've been doing on it. I read one book that said there are three different types of Hypericum. I listened to one woman who said there are 600 varieties. Who do you believe? I don't know. The medicinal properties? I heard one person say, you know, many people say, that you can use it for an antidepressant, you can use it as an antiviral. I heard it was great in curing AIDS, cancer, you name it. I read that it will cause mania. Never use it as an antidepressant. Never use it at all. Stay away from it. It can't be used for antiviral. It can't be used for anything. Ah! So confusing. What a confusing world we live in because we have access to so much information and eventually it all contradicts itself. I hate that. I would love to believe that there is a solid right and wrong, up, down, yes, no. I don't think there is. So I guess the best you can do is try. Try to make it. Try to take it. See if you like it. I know I've had tea from St. John's Wort. I don't know if I felt less depressed. I don't know if I was depressed to begin with, so I can't, I can't speak to that. Um, I read some, some different information on the longevity of this shrub. Now I would love for this shrub to last forever because it kind of symbolizes right now my marriage. This is the danger in being, give, being given things like this is for your anniversary. This is for the birth of your child. Like if it doesn't make it, then what happens? Is my marriage cursed? I don't know. If Ariel has put up with me this long, I think he can make it the long haul. I hope. I don't know what would be his breaking point after tolerating me for all these years. So something I read was that this plant has a lifespan of three years. Another something that I read was that this plant is invasive and will take over everything. So, and, and it will last forever. Um, I, it can be, it can be propagated through stem cuttings, through breaking up the roots, and by seeds. You can collect the seeds. We haven't gone to seed yet. Um, but you can collect the seeds when that time comes and plant your own St. John's wort, which I think I'm going to do that. I don't know. Elisa does uh, stem cutting propagation. And, and I'd love to learn how to do that. I'd love to try it. Um, roots seems like an easy way, like dig it up and break it up. Uh, we have a nice rock barrier here that I put around it. And this is simply to stop Ariel from mowing it over. He has a tendency <laughs> to mow over everything I put in the, yeah, Dorothy thinks that funny because she knows daddy does that. Daddy's life course, his life path is to mow over everything <laughs> I plant. So this is this is to either stop him from mowing or to toss him off of his lawnmower. 
Um, but I don't know if having these big rocks here, would, would that stop the roots from spreading? Maybe, I don't know. Um, they say that this bush will grow to be about three to five feet tall. Um, and we can talk a little bit here about identifying this. Now for me, this plant is easy, easily identified because right over here we have the tag from the garden center, Golden St. John's Ward. Ooh, there it is, deer resistant. We like that. It's a full sun plant, but I have heard other people say that they like to put theirs in shade and partial shade and that the flowers are nicer. Now, Dorothy is here with me today. Hey, Dee. Come on down and tell me what you notice about these flowers. Um, wow. What do you notice? How many petals do the flowers have? Because that's a good way to identify a plant. They have five petals on each flower. Five petals on each flower. Lovely. And, like, the flower has, like, a little... Each, like, vine has a cluster of flowers on them. Mm-hmm. And the flowers have this, like, pom-pom thing. It kind of looks like a dandelion. Okay, so like a dandelion. I think pom -pom. that's where the pollen is. Oh, okay. That's a good and theory. And then they have, like, a spike. A up spike? In the oh. Middle. A spike. Now, see, Abuela was telling me this morning that in Britain, they call St. John's Wort Rose of Sharon. And I was saying to Abuela, hey, Rose of Sharon is that hibiscus looking thing with the big tongue sticking out of the middle. And I didn't realize that this guy was going to have a tongue sticking out of the middle too. So maybe that's why. Although though the Rose of Sharon we're used to is in the, what's it called? Hibiscus family. And this is Hypericum. I don't know. Maybe we could learn more about that. Now, what do our leaves look like to you, Miss D? Um, they kind of, um... Well, they're oval, and then they have, like, this light, they're like a army green, mm -hmm. and they have, like, a lighter green in the middle, and it starts out, like, fat, and then it, like, gets faded, and, like, gets skinnier as it goes, like, it's kind of a triangle shape. Okay, and how the about middle. the little buds? Let's, let's take a good look at our little buds. We have well, lots of those. Some of the buds that, um, this bud is about to bloom, I think. Mm -hmm. Maybe it just started to be a bud, I don't really know. Okay. Because it has a little spike there. I see. But this bud just looks like, it has the green things around it. I think those are going to turn into the leaves. Okay. I mean, it's a petals. good theory of the petals. Okay, I like that. But there are leaves under each of the petals, so I think it's going to be like that. Okay, okay. How about, let's see, down inside of the plant, what have we got going on here? Um, it kind of looks like sticks. Sticks, yeah, woody sticks down inside. That's interesting. Oh, your brothers are having a good shout. Um, all right, so this, this fella. And some of the leaves are red. Oh yeah, some of the leaves are red. They were not like that the day I planted it. Now, the reason it's called St. John's Wart is because those yellow flowers usually open on, on or around St. John's Wart's Day. Now, when we got this on St. John's Day... Saint, did I say St. John's Wart's Day? What? Yeah. Don't listen to me. Okay, so St. John's Day. Um, it didn't have any flowers on it yet. So, so we had to wait for two things, for the flowers to open and for the rain to stop for us to come out and visit with this beautiful plant. And hopefully, it's hopefully, thunderstorms today. of course it's supposed to be thunderstorms today. How much rain have we had, Dee? Um, since on the last day of June, it's been like pouring. Pouring, constantly, since right? Then. Yeah, which is in nice contrast to the drought we had last year. I appreciate it. How do you feel about it? Um, well, I 
get to do more of my cross stitching instead of going out and jump rope. Right, jump roping is your favorite thing to do. You want to give us a demonstration? Dorothy is becoming a jump roping pro this year. She could barely jump rope at all. And then the Easter Bunny brought her a fresh jump rope and brought the boys jump ropes and she prefers the boys to hers. Raffaella's house. Mm -hmm. I think it was Savannah and Troy's birthday. Yes. So um, I brought my jump rope to show Raffaella, but then I left it. Oh. And then the next time I came, Raffaella was like, You left your jump rope. And I was like, Where is it? She said, It was inside the house. And then I was like, Let's go get it. And then um, we started just playing with dolls. And then I was like, Where's the jump rope? And then she said, I don't know where inside the Oh my gosh, so that would be one reason to prefer the boys' jump ropes, is that we don't have your jump rope anymore. But I would prefer mine because it's, like, not yarn. I see. And, um, it's fun to just play with it and it makes you feel more comfortable. Well, there we have that. Some flat land is important for jumping rope. Without a mud puddle. Alright, what you got, kid? Good old-fashioned fun! Also cures depression if you don't want to take St. John's wort tincture. Do y'all know how to make a tincture? My mother-in-law, oh so much fun I had with her. She taught me how to make tinctures and she took me all around town picking different herbs and plants and trees and barks and flowers and we took all of those and we put them you know individually into jars with vodka I want to say I wish she was here to tell us um, today I, I, I want to say it was hundred proof vodka we put it in each of the herbs so with St. John's wort you can harvest the flowers, put them in a jar with your vodka to make a tincture, a medicinal tincture that you can take a few drops at a time. Be careful because even though it's an herb and it's natural, do not be fooled into thinking that you don't have to worry about dosages and things. I'd research that before taking anything or at least keep an eye on yourself and moderate how you feel upon taking it. Um, I saw someone use the leaves and the flowers to make an oil. They used, um, oh, I can't remember. I think it was grapeseed oil, but I, any oil will do. Um, and they just stuffed it in a jar, put it in a sunny windowsill. I've got a dandelion oil going right now that we're gonna show you soon. We're gonna make that into a nice salve. Um, so you can, you can do that. The, the tinctures, if I remember, gosh, it involved the number six. Six weeks, six months. I feel like it was six months you left it sitting in that vodka. But maybe six weeks makes more sense because I know the oil, you want to leave it sit about a month. And then you strain out all of... The dandelions? Well, dandelions. When we're making dandelions, you're going to strain out the St. John's wort. When you're making St. John's wort, you strain out whatever. Yeah, well, both. You know, whatever. It doesn't matter. You can do it with with just about anything, I guess. Um, so the oil you you would use topically, you know, on your skin, and you know, I've heard it's good for burns. Like I said, everything is contradictory, though. I've heard it's good for burns. I heard it's bad for burns. I heard it's good for your skin. Any infections? I heard it's bad for your skin. If you take it orally, it's supposed to be good for mood and bad for mood. It's supposed to be good for virus. It's supposed to be useless against virus. It's, you know, and who knows who's feeding us this information? Is this pharmaceutical companies who don't want us knowing that you can grow this crap in your yard and take it and be fine? So Is that who's telling us it doesn't work? So then you will just buy their stuff. Right, so then you will just buy yourself their stuff. A nine-year-old gets that, so maybe we as adults should 
should be thinking along those lines. Um, I heard it's good, you know, speaking of depression, we're having a beautiful sunny day here and we feel happy in the sun, but some people suffer from something called seasonal depression, which means when it's not gorgeous like this out and it's snowy and I love the snow, but our, our bodies need vitamin D and all that to, to stay happy and healthy. And so one, one source that I read said, yeah, this stuff, this stuff helps with that, with your seasonal depression, Omega. specifically because of something in it. I'll we'll let you guess what. Someone else says that it doesn't. Yeah, do everyone, that. everyone says the opposite. People are, people are pains. So I think, I think the best thing to do is give it a try and see how you feel about it, because it's easy. And I was just going to say it can't hurt, but one, one article says it can hurt. If it brings on mania and you go completely insane, um, that can be hurtful. But it's worth a shot. Now you know what you're looking for. Obviously, you would know how to identify it if, like me, you planted it yourself. But I think we've given you a good look at it if you just go out and find it. I hope in future years to have a big, long shrub row of this stuff because whether I take it medicinally or not, I like the cheerful yellow flowers and I like that it represents June 24th, my wedding anniversary. And if I can make this thing bloom and grow from this plant specifically, bloom and grow forever. Who's a Sound of Music fan? Dorothy! If I can make that bloom and grow, I mean, how symbolic is that <laughs> of, of my magnificent marriage union with that fantastic Mr. Jones? I'm mowing it over. <laughs> right, not mowing it over. We celebrate him not mowing it over. All right. We're going to leave you here to think about all of the mixed information we've given you today and let us know if you try it. One fun thing that you're going to find if you do make the tincture or the oil is that these beautiful yellow flowers will turn into a red liquid. They will turn your liquid mm. red, which is exciting. And I do want to try that. I just want to wait till I have some more blossoms before I do that. Maybe, maybe if I get it to work. We'll do a cool demonstration later for y'all. Mom. What, dear? Uh, Hold on, here's Basil to tell us something important. Can you say hello, dear? I love you. <laughs> I love you, too. That was important. <laughs> okay, take care now. We love you.